From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at 6, streaming now. Being in, on this side of town, we try to make sure that we're here to protect, to serve, provide knowledge to the community. A local business is spreading a message of hope while providing a much needed service to the community. We will show you how this effort is benefiting everyone. Tracking student attendance can be challenging for schools under normal circumstances, but it's even harder during the pandemic. The unique steps one school is taking and why they say attendance matters right now. Governor Holcomb announces Indiana is moving to stage five of its reopening plan. We break down what this means for you and the message about masks. A massive development in the Breonna Taylor case out of Louisville. A former officer indicted, but it's not for Taylor's death. The new details emerging tonight and the local reaction. Welcome into the News at 6 on WRTV. I'm Amanda Starantino. A daycare on the east side is trying to spread the message of hope as families weather the pandemic and continue to battle violence in their communities. WRTV's Stephanie Wade talks with the Black-owned business on how they've been able to survive the pandemic and what the owner wants to see from her community. Um, a lot of parents were very worried about bringing their children back, so we had to put a lot of different systems in place, different processes. It was difficult keeping the doors open at Angels of Hope Child Care Ministry on the east side at the beginning of the pandemic. Making sure that we have open line of communications with all parents and staff and making sure that we are accommodating just not the children needs, but the parents need. Making families feel comfortable and safe bringing their kids there. Though attendance is down right now at about half capacity, Director Kiana Williams knows this service is critical to her community. It was really important for me to open on this side of town because I wanted to bring a positive impact to the neighborhood. I know that there was a, a, a may say a shortage of quality child care and um, that's something that we do bring to the community. As the city and nation fight against racial injustices and lead important discussions on race right now, Williams wanted to make a statement of her own and do something to bring her community together as well. I decided for us to get the message out. We're right off the highway to let everyone know that black lives do matter, but we need to also make sure that we're taking in consideration and making sure that black lives matter to ourselves as well. Having a local artist paint Black Lives Matter outside her center to bring together a community in a time of division and divisiveness and put the emphasis back on raising your neighbors and raising your children up. I remember my grandmother uh, used to say, it take a village to raise, to raise your child. And I totally understand that now, but we have moved away from that. And I think we should get back to that. Stephanie Wade, WRTV. The daycare is located at 2120 North Emerson Avenue in Indianapolis. They are currently enrolling kids ages 1 to 13 years old. Plus, they have availability for e-learning students as well. Tracking student attendance during remote learning can be challenging. Absenteeism was a problem even before the pandemic, but as WRTV's Troy Washington shows us, attendance still matters. She spoke with a Northside school pivoting in a unique way to keep families on track during the pandemic. Even though students are logging on, instead of walking into a classroom these days, attendance laws and requirements still apply. Leading a virtual school is a whole different ball game, right? As a charter school, families are selecting our school, right? So we know that they place a heavy focus on the education and the supports that we provide here at Ace Prep. Anna Schultz has switched some things around since welcoming her scholars to Ace Preparatory Academy Charter School on Hillside Avenue on August 6th. Really allowed us to think about what sort of wraparound care do scholars need and do families need. And we talk all the time about giving families grace, right? So they're doing more than the best they know how. That means giving grace, but making sure students show up to learn. Here's how it's done. Teachers start the day with the Zoom check-in. If we did not see a scholar present on Zoom or if the classroom teacher has not been made aware that that scholar would not be attending today, the teachers are reaching out to families a lot of times in that moment or as soon as the Zoom call is done, just checking up on families. If that doesn't work, they've dedicated a whole team to figure out how to help. Ma'am, that we have 
a repurposed staff that typically work with scholars within the building but are not classroom teachers. So these would be instructional assistants or some of our cultural behavior specialists and they are now family liaisons. And so they serve as um, kind of a second line of attack, so to speak, when it comes to providing supports to families for attendance. Schultz has worked in education for more than two decades. She was once named Indiana Teacher of the Year, but this year has even thrown her for a loop. Being a parent and working and a teacher all at the same time is incredibly difficult and incredibly challenging. But she says her team will do what it takes to keep families on track. And even if students do miss their virtual sessions, they are required to complete coursework in order to pass. Working for you, Troy Washington, WRTV. Teachers at Ace Preparatory Academy tell WRTV that challenges like a change in phone number can cause a disconnect and in some cases dozens of students dropped out of touch with schools completely. But overall those teachers say once contact is made with the family the attendance issue is usually resolved. Many Ace students will return to the classroom in October. Today, Governor Eric Holcomb announced the state is moving forward to stage five of its reopening plan that will become official Saturday. So what does stage five mean? First, it means size limitations will be removed for social gatherings and meetings. Organizers of events with more than 500 people must submit a written plan to the health department. Restaurants and bars may open at full capacity, but social distancing must be maintained between tables. Gyms and fitness centers may resume normal operations. Face coverings are still required, and you must continue to maintain social distancing. More than a dozen bar and nightclub owners have filed a lawsuit against the city of Indianapolis and the Marion County Health Department over their COVID-19 operating restrictions. At this moment in Marion County, these types of businesses can only operate at 25% capacity. There can be no bar seating, no dancing or live entertainment, and they must be closed by midnight. Again, these are the restrictions in Marion County right now. The lawsuit claims these restrictions violate the business owner's rights and it claims the health orders lack a scientific relation to the spread of COVID-19. Two business owners named in the suit say they feel unfairly targeted. They do not understand why non-age restricted restaurants are able to operate at a higher capacity and they say they're losing customers to surrounding counties who have different rules. Our customers are telling us they are leaving our establishment to go to these surrounding counties and these places are so busy that they have a line out the door they can't even let everybody in we understand we're not going to open up 100 percent yet that's fine but we want to be with the rest of the state what's we want fairness the plaintiffs are asking that the court find the county orders unlawful a spokesperson for the mayor's office told WRTV the city does not comment on pending litigation. However, he added that the mayor fully supports the health department's leadership and current orders, saying they have slowed the spread of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Indiana State Department of Health confirms 10 additional COVID-19 deaths. 3,305 Hoosiers have died with the coronavirus since March, and data shows the state from, and data from the state shows that 8.6% of the people tested for COVID-19 tested positive for the virus. Kevin. Amanda, I'm going to start by saying something that I've been able to say for basically 36 straight days. It's dry. It's comfortable and it's mostly cloudy in much of central Indiana. Months see a little warmer. If you get a little more sunshine, you get a little more warmth. Otherwise, temperatures low to mid 70s. Where are we headed tonight? Into the 50s. We'll hang on to a decent amount of the cloud cover from the tropical system south. But again, we stay dry. Let's highlight the next few days and you'll see the trend. Temperature 78 tomorrow. Not much different Friday, but it will be quite different Saturday. Saturday is the warmest temperature within the seven day forecast. First weekend of fall, but a summer like feel. This will not last. What happens and how much cooler it will be coming up. New developments in the Brianna Taylor case out of Louisville. Officers shot and killed her during a narcotics investigation back in March. Today, a grand jury indicted former police officer Brett Hankison with three counts of wanton endangerment for allegedly firing into the apartments of Taylor's neighbors. 
but he does not face charges for her death. Officers who burst into Taylor's home shot her multiple times on March 13th. During that investigation, Taylor died. This has set off months of protests in downtown Louisville. And let's get to WRTV's Cameron Riddle at the site of a peace walk that just ended. He got reaction to what happened today in the Breonna Taylor case. Cameron. Uh, Amanda, good evening. As you said, no charges filed related directly to Breonna Taylor's death. That has got a lot of people on edge across the country, particularly tonight down in Louisville. But just an hour and a half north, you'll be here in Indianapolis. As you know, we have had our fair share of protests throughout this summer. Earlier this afternoon, we caught up with Indianapolis Mayor Joe Hogsett and Police Chief Randall Taylor as they did a peace walk throughout the west side of Indianapolis, getting a temperature on how things are going here in this neighborhood, as well as us asking him for a temperature on how the city is feeling and the possibility of any protests that could happen tonight. The mayor says they are prepared and have learned lessons from the summer. If protests appear, um uh, the constitutional right of people to protest will be protected. What is not protected is violence and vandalism and looting uh, and mischief and mayhem. Now, the mayor and police chief say there is a plan should there be any protest tonight, though they say they have had communication with some of the local organizations that have led protesters through the streets of the city over the past couple of months. And so far, it does not appear that there are any immediate plans for protests. However, should that change on the uh, spin of a dime, they are ready and prepared. Reporting live tonight on the West Side, I'm Cameron Riddle, WRTV. Cameron, thank you. And here is a timeline of events in the Breonna Taylor case. On March 12th, a judge signed off on warrants. On March 13th, officers served a narcotics warrant at Breonna Taylor's Louisville apartment. During that raid, Kenneth Walker, Taylor's boyfriend, is accused of shooting an officer. Police say they returned fire and hit Taylor. Taylor was pronounced dead and police arrested Walker. On April 27th, Taylor's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit against the Louisville Police Department and the city. The city settled with the family this month. On May 13th, Attorney General Daniel Cameron was named as special prosecutor. On June 23rd, Officer Brett Hankison, one of three officers who fired shots the night of Taylor's death, is fired for allegedly shooting, quote, blindly into the apartments of Taylor's neighbors. And today, Attorney General Daniel Cameron announced a grand jury indicted former Louisville police officer Brett Hankinson with three counts of wanton endangerment of the first degree. Hankinson was not directly charged in connection to Taylor's death. The grand jury did not indict any of the other officers. As many businesses think about their return to work plans, a local company is trying to make that process easier for everyone. Their COVID-19 solution and how it works. A pair of NASCAR's young stars with roots in the Hoosier State, they are both getting ready to make a run for a championship. Coming up in sports, see how 2020 has been a very different ride for Chase Briscoe and Justin Haley. Welcome back. Hoosiers have settled into a working from home setup, but many offices are looking at implementing return to work plans that allows their employees to remain safe and healthy. An indie based company has developed a COVID-19 solution that is ready to help make that process easier for employers. HC1 transforms lab data into personalized health care insights. This is to ensure the right patient gets exactly the right diagnostic test from the lab and the correct prescription. While this pandemic and an important signal you can find with people's health is how risky is the area based on an infection perspective. HC1 created Workforce Advisor, which is a way for employers to track real time lab results. It's a local risk index to help employers support the health and safety of its employees. Uh, the fact that we're tied into 22,000 lab testing locations across the United States, our cloud system is able to give you really what looks almost like a, a weather forecast, but that instead of looking at tornadoes and hurricanes, it's looking at where is the, the COVID virus spreading and where is it subsiding. And you can use that information then to more effectively plan your 
return to work and you know return to life programs that are underway across the country. HC1 also has an online database available for the public to check out for free so you can keep an eye on COVID spread in your area. It is easy and free to request access. We have a link to that on the WRTV app. Well, the socket locket is an adhesive card holder um, where you can hold up to one, two, or three cards securely in place. You may remember this product and this young entrepreneur from our Hiring Hoosiers series. Katie Gelhausen created the Socket Locket product that sticks to your phone and allows you to use both a phone grip and you can store your cards at the same time. We traveled to Elwood and Progressive Plastics where Hoosiers manufacture her product. Now the Cicero native is up for a really big opportunity and she tells us this could bring even more jobs to the Hoosier State. Katie is selected to pitch her product to buyers at the 2020 Walmart open call. This is her big opportunity to get her product made right near her hometown onto store shelves of this big box retailer. Out of 14,000 applications, Katie's product is now a finalist. Sometimes the buyers do go ahead and make a decision on the spot, but Usually the buyer, that's just the starting point of relationship with Walmart. Even like a regional contract, it would be huge for um, Socket Locket. Hopefully we have a large purchase order and hopefully we can bring a lot of jobs here to the area. Katie's presentation will be on October 1st. If you want to learn more about her story, visit HiringHoosiers.com and we wish her luck. Kevin. That is pretty exciting. Well, we changed seasons yesterday. We're starting to change color now. I snapped this picture. These are eye level leaves. I think it's sugar maple. And you can definitely see some color starting to burst in central Indiana. Now, I think the dry conditions will obviously have an impact on some of our fall colors. Big temperature swings ahead. That's one headline. Our rain chances low through the weekend. We'll have a chance then early next week as well. You'll need a jacket for next week. Let's talk about why. Temperatures climb next three days. They'll peak on Saturday at 84 degrees. There'll be a storm system early next week in the fall when you start to make bigger temperature changes. Then the pressure changes on a yeah, more uh, upscale basis, if you want to call it that. So a deeper low pressure area that will spin colder air into the state and it will also increase the wind and send our temperatures falling only in the lower to middle 60s Wednesday for high temperatures. Lows will be in the 40s. That's why you'll need a jacket as we get to next week. Not tomorrow, about the same as today. If you're comfortable today, you'll be comfortable tomorrow. Temperatures just above the average high for this time of the year. The wind is light. Friday will end the work week with a mixture of clouds and sunshine right at 80 degrees. A good night for Friday night football. Mostly clear skies, comfortable temperatures, light south wind. Seven-day forecast, again, the next three days are all about warming up. Then after that, it's about cooling off. Temperatures become much cooler. The chance of a thunderstorm on Sunday at 30%. We'll hold on to a chance of showers as the progressively cooler temperatures arrive through midweek and stick around for all of uh, next week, I guess after Wednesday through probably the first week of October. Amanda. All right, thank you, Kevin. NASCAR's playoffs continue this weekend. A pair of young drivers with championship hopes are from the Hoosier State, and both could be on their way to big-time success. Brad Brown has a closer look in tonight's Sports Extra Spotlight. They are often called the next generation of stock car racing's stars, but for the dozen drivers in NASCAR's Xfinity Series playoffs, it feels like their time is now. And among them are a pair of Hoosiers. Chase Briscoe from Mitchell, Indiana, and Winamax Justin Haley. Both already have big wins this season and their eyes on a bigger prize. You can't let the championship define you um, and define your season. Um, yes, we want to win the championship, but at the same time, winning races is, is a big deal. Briscoe was the Xfinity Series Rookie of the Year in 2019. His July win at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway was just a sliver of his success in 2020. The races that we've won have, have been racetracks that I feel like are kind of driver racetracks uh, between Darlington, Bristol, Homestead, you know, places like that. And I think I feel like I've proven my worth uh, in the sport. Last weekend, he won again at Bristol, giving him seven Xfinity race wins on the year, best in the series. Briscoe shares the points lead with Austin Sindrick as the playoffs begin. 
I feel confident that we can make it to the Final Four, but um, you know, I don't know if there's really one guy that sticks out um, over any others. I feel like anybody on any given day can be the guy to beat. Haley has had just two wins this year, but they came at NASCAR's two biggest tracks, Daytona and Talladega. Justin Haley went to the bottom, and Justin Haley is going to win. Haley had his NASCAR breakthrough last July with a stunning Cup Series victory at Daytona. I don't know. There's been no magical piece, right? We didn't just, like, sit around around a boardroom or, like, man, this is going to get us from 10th to 1st. I mean, it's just been every little thing, every little detail. Um, each and every week. Briscoe is 25 years old, Haley just 21. Both seem to be in line for a full-time move to NASCAR's top ranks soon. Every step is so big um, that it takes a while, so um, I don't think you'll ever be ready, but I'm pretty happy with my progress for, for being a young driver and not having a lot of experience. Um, I, I can't say I wouldn't change much. You know, last year, I, I'd only won one race, so you know I'm not that that pretty girl at the dance that everybody wants. You know, I'm, I'm now that I've won seven races, I'm a lot more wanted in, in the sport. So it's totally different. There are seven races left on the NASCAR Xfinity Series schedule. It starts this weekend in Las Vegas. They'll cut the playoff field to eight drivers after Charlotte, and then the four that make it to the end will race for the title in Phoenix. It's a solid chance that one or both of these Indiana guys are in contention that final weekend. Brad Brown, WRTV Sports. Temperatures Saturday peak at 84, 85, and then slide all the way Wednesday into the 60s. Amanda? Thanks, Kevin, and thank you for making WRTV your choice for news. We'll be back at 7.